Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I guess today is a little bit of a, a shotgun type of episode. I'm going to do some news that has come out about Tesla and SpaceX, and I have a small announcement at the end, so just stay tuned for that if you care about that. I am, without further ado, I'm going to start with this really interesting video that was posted by uh, MikeCyberOwners.com. Anyway, it's footage, it's really, really low qu quality footage of a Cybertruck driving on high suspension setting. I can't guarantee you whether this is real or not, but certainly if it's CGI, it's it's pretty well done. I've turned off the sound for this because all there is is people talking in the background, but basically you can see the Cybertruck back there. And if we play this, you can see it driving and it looks like it actually, I mean, who knows if this is the absolute highest suspension, but it looks like there's a pretty good clearance there. And if you don't know, this is all air suspension. So this is stuff where, wow, that is that's a really big clearance between the wheel well and where the tire is. Uh, if you don't know, the air suspension allows it to ride between, you know, kind of more road type driving where it's very low so that the, the, the traditional way that you've seen the Cybertruck, I'm sure in the past is with the suspension most if not all of the way down so that the wheel well above it, above the tires, is barely above the tires. But here you can see that there's a lot of room. So if you're driving off-roading, going on, you know, crazy back roads where you have to go over rocks and things like that, you can increase the uh, air suspension. The other thing that's interesting about this, of course, is that you can also add suspension because it's just using air. It's just pneumatics, essentially. You can add air pressure to the back if you load the truck down. So one of the big problems with traditional trucks, of course, that might just have spring shock absorbers or something like that, spring suspension, is if you put a couple of thousand pounds of stuff on the back of the truck, the truck will drive like this. <laughs> so, you know, if you're going to carry heavy loads, you need to be able to have some adjustable suspension that's available to you, or the thing's just going to drive really, really bad all the time because the suspension's going to be super, super tight. So anyway, this, this type of suspension not just allows you to go off-road, but it allows you to put a great deal of weight into the back of the vehicle, for example, the Cyberlander, <laughs> things like that, although that's not the heaviest thing in the world, but, you know, or a whole bunch of dirt or bricks or whatever you're carrying around, any of that kind of stuff, you can adjust the suspension to keep the ride level so that you're not driving down the highway like, you know, like this. So anyway, this is really good news to see that this is working. It's not surprising at all. I'm, you know, it's pretty cool to see just how high up this thing can go. And again, we don't absolutely know whether this is full suspension or not, but it it certainly could be. It's giving clearance that looks like about the, the radius of the tire, right? So half the diameter of the tire. Now, I don't know how big those tires are, but you know, if you can kind of project that out, you can figure out approximately what your clearance is if you're doing off-roading. So anyway, this is very, very cool. Again, not super surprising because they've been advertising since day one. It was going to have air suspension. Just cool to be able to see the truck driving with, you know, the suspension engaged. So you can see just how high off the ground it can get. Next up, Claudia from my German office passed this one on to me. This is from RBB, and this is actually rather surprising. Tesla starts a battery factory in Grünheide, which of course is near Berlin slash Brandenburg. Anyway, this is surprising because the last I heard, Tesla was still waiting on permits from the German government to be able to actually begin battery production. So this is actually great news if it is in fact true. And interestingly enough, while I only saw this today, this is actually dated the 15th of February, so a full week ago at this point. Anyway, reading on here, the U.S. electric car manufacturer Tesla has put the battery factory into operation at its European plant in Grünheide. Economics Minister Steinbach announced this in Potsdam on Wednesday. The plant is to be further expanded. So a few notes from this article, I'll leave a, a link to the original in the description, of course, and you can read it in its original German. This is a Google translation, so it may or may not be perfect. Anyway, just <laughs> take so take the translation if it comes out kind of odd as, as the fact that Google Translate is not perfect with this. Anyway, however, the company only produces individual battery components, Steinbach continues. Contrary to original plans, the U.S. group has relocated further production steps to the USA because the business conditions there are more favorable due to tax incentives. So the likelihood here is that we're going to be producing battery components, but the final assembly of the batteries and packs is going to be in the U.S. because there is $35 a kilowatt hour, maybe $45 a kilowatt hour, depending on different conditions and things. They haven't quite settled that out. But anyway, a very large tax incentive to Tesla to do the final component and, and battery module assembly in the United States. 
So this all makes sense. And what Europe should do is they should compete with the U.S. with this. You know, Germany should put in their own version of this so that they can keep these battery components in Germany, because, of course, there's an economic benefit to Germany for this. But also there's an environmental benefit because shipping things across the Atlantic is, you know, environmentally taxing. So anyway, Tesla is doing what it needs to do as a company to make, you know, to maximize its profits. But there are negative consequences to it shipping these things across the Atlantic. So with luck, Germany will eventually institute something along the lines of what the U.S. is doing so that they can keep a lot of these battery components and construct the final modules in Germany as opposed to in the U.S. So just a few more points from this article. Number one, quote, the building is buzzing. It's full, said Steinbach in an interview with RBB. What is important is the production step up to which the battery parts are completed, Steinbach continues. And that is already well advanced, according to the Minister of Economic Affairs. Quote, what is manufactured there as a preliminary product on the spot fully utilizes this building on the spot. So clearly we're talking about not just beginning work, but actually sounds like it's ramped up to a pretty decent extent if things are buzzing at this point. Another note here is that Tesla has not yet submitted an application for further factory expansion stages, and that is something that they could and I guess people think that they will do to actually produce more batteries. So at this point, they're in kind of a phase one of this whole thing, but they haven't applied for permits for phase two of the project yet. And then finally from this article, at the same time, Steinbach dismissed the concerns of free voters and environmentalists that the groundwater would be endangered in the event of a possible expansion of the plant. Quote, we see it more optimistically than you do, end quote, Steinbach said, in the direction of the opposition party. He was certain that environmental minister Axel Vogel, the Green Party, and the lower water authority of the Oder Spray district would find, quote, an appropriate solution. So if you don't know, Tesla's factory, the whole factory, Giga Berlin, is on a water protection area. So they've had to tread very, very lightly about this. And they've had a lot of concern about environmental impacts to the water supply of the entire district. And while there is a very, very reasonable concern, there has been some evidence that supposed grassroots efforts have actually been funded by competitors to Tesla to slow them down. So anyway, there's a whole like political football with that that I'm not going to really get into because I honestly don't even know all the details of it. But it is interesting that the government is now apparently taking the side of Tesla over a lot of these environmental groups. So good news for Tesla. Hopefully Tesla will be good stewards of the environment. I mean, they, they have traditionally been so. So I think that that will continue to go on. But it is very much in their own best interest to make sure that they are good stewards of the environment going forward. And then the last big news today actually has to do with SpaceX, not Tesla, and that is that SpaceX is proceeding with Starship orbital launch attempt after static fire. So it looks like they are not going to be doing another static fire. We can see here that SpaceX's static fire test of nearly all the engines of its Starship booster earlier this month was, quote, the last box to check, end quote, before the vehicle's first orbital launch attempt, likely sometime in March, a company official said February 21st. So again, I'll leave a link to the original article in the description, of course, but just touching on a couple of more points here. Number one, only 31 of the 33 Raptor engines in the Super Heavy booster fired. SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk tweeted just after the test that one engine was commanded off just before ignition and a second shut down earlier. He later said the engines ran at 50% of their rated thrust. And that, of course, led to speculation that SpaceX would need to perform a second static fire test to get all 33 engines or to run them at higher thrust levels. Henry, though, suggested that SpaceX was not planning another such test before an orbital launch attempt, which is really good news. And then, of course, we continue on with the very, very necessary part, an FAA launch license. The company still needs to obtain an FAA launch license before attempting the launch. Quote, we hope to secure that license in the very near future, end quote, Henry said, setting up a launch attempt probably in the month of March. And just as a little more color on that from back channel sources that I am hearing about, the earliest date in March that they could attempt the launch would be the 8th, but the more likely window is about the 15th through the 18th of March. So wow, it's coming up really, really soon. That's less than a month from now. So finally, after all of this time, we could have a launch, a suborbital launch. The idea, I believe, at least if they're sticking with their original plan, is to launch it over the uh, Gulf of Mexico, of course, and to thread the needle between Florida and Cuba 
and drop the booster off, which I believe will make an attempt to do a soft landing in the ocean, or potentially it will try to come back and land on the chopsticks. I don't know the details about that yet. But then the Starship upper stage will continue on a just suborbital trajectory, which will go around the Earth, and it will land. It will soft touch down in the water off the coast of Kauai in Hawaii. So the idea is, of course, it will be lost. It will, it will, if assuming it survives all of the other parts, it will come in and it will pretend to do a landing as if it was landing on, you know, a landing pad or something, but it will be on the ocean. So it will just fall into the water and maybe it will float. I don't know. They might be able to recover it. But worst case scenario would be, you know, a relatively hard landing and it will fall into the ocean and, and sink. But the really cool part is what happens after this launch. And so this is really interesting. Once SpaceX performs that orbital launch demonstration, Henry said the company is ready to move ahead rapidly with operational Starship launches. Quote, we very, very quickly converge on a system that we can operationalize, he said, starting with launches of second generation Starlink satellites. Quote, we have a few that are waiting very patiently to be launched on Starship. So it sounds like if this initial launch is successful, fingers crossed, that we could see additional Starship launches relatively quickly and they could be putting, you know, actual payload into orbit. Now, they'll still probably be working out the whole landing of the upper stage of the Starship and the reentry and all that stuff. So probably we will lose a whole bunch of upper stages, which will slow the cadence down. But as they're working on this, they'll still be deploying, you know, operational payload into orbit, which will be really, really exciting to see. You know, It'll be amazing to see Starship actually delivering payload to orbit, even if the whole reusability thing isn't quite worked out yet. So that's the news from Tesla and SpaceX today. A very small announcement I want to make. I don't know if you've seen, but I've been starting to do more videos about sort of more tech and AI centric stuff in general, as opposed to only focusing on Tesla. And I want to just sort of let you know that my plan going forward 2023, I was you know trying to implement this, is to do about an 80-20 or maybe 90-10 split between Tesla news and AI or tech-centric news in general. I think AI in particular this year is going through such an incredible revolution that it's really worth keeping an eye on all of this stuff and for me to be helping to explain these things to you and at least bringing you the news and all of that stuff. So anyway, hopefully you'll understand that that's where I'm going with this. I wanna make sure that the channel you know, remains a lot about Tesla and SpaceX, but I also wanna make sure that we are able to discuss other matters that are really, really important because ultimately they revolve back to Tesla anyway, and to SpaceX and to Twitter, et cetera, to Elon Musk's companies. But overall, I think it's really valuable to keep tabs on all of these different subjects. They are all very confluent with each other. And so it's extremely useful to be able to see how all of these things interoperate and cross-pollinate with each other. So anyway, if you hate the other stuff, just don't watch them. If you really, really hate that idea, I guess you can go ahead and unsubscribe. But I'm hoping people will actually subscribe because I am just a few hundred away from 50,000 right now. And we will do something special at 50,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, do subscribe. And of course, be sure that you like the video as well so that other people can find it. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. Speaking of people who really support the channel, I really do appreciate it. And a lot of these articles actually came from discussions on Discord, so thank you for that as well. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see outgoing shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.